if we're talking about a smart government. It's such a big range of what a smart government is. We've been very, very limited in, in our direction to it. And, and again, please don't get me wrong, we're 90 million people, so if you're producing you know, subsidy cards, it's not for a million or two million. I think we can handle that. We would have been absolutely incredibly efficient if we were like a smaller country, maybe like Jordan or the UAE. But the reality is that we've got a big base for us to be able to, to deal with. And that puts a humongous burden on the whole ideology and thought of building a smart government that will be able really to service uh, and interact with uh, the people on a technological level. The other hindering factor is we have I believe it's about 43% illiteracy rate in Egypt, and hence there's a very big portion, almost 50% of the population, that you need to upgrade in a sense for them to be able to take advantage of the e-government or the smart government concept. Lekin, is there, is there a real difference between e-government and smart government? And I want to start with you just as a concept, e-government, smart government, and what is the difference between them, and what are the major efforts that have been put within that perspective? Well, uh, these are uh, very interesting questions. Let me start off by saying where, we, where we're coming with government. We have one of the oldest governments in the world that dates back thousands of years. And part of the challenge of making the government smarter or more modern or using technology to develop governmental services is really the legacy of systems that we have in our government, the culture that was developed over years and years and years. Uh, uh, it is not literacy per se. Literacy, of course, if you have higher rate of literacy, that would be uh, uh, really easier for adopting new technologies, new models. The challenge of uh, really deliv delivering government services is really to how to uh, de deliver I mean, create delivery channels that are effective. At the same time, the government model needs to be uh, adapted and to make adva take, take, take advantage of the technology to deliver services in new ways, uh, modern ways, uh, more efficient ways, uh, to be more citizen-centric. You see, in the past, before the ICT revolution, before 20 years ago, uh, it used to be the case that you need to move. Uh, to get the services. A citizen need to move from his house, from his business to the government, I mean, uh, providing uh, uh, the services in specific locations. Also dealing with paper, dealing with cash as a way of really settling, uh, really, if you have fees to pay, if you have penalties or whatever. Uh, you need to get a permit, you need to move to the government. 20 years ago, and actually I remember in 1996, we hosted in Egypt an e-government uh, G7 seven economies uh, conference in Egypt and we discussed these 20 years ago but then the internet penetration was very low in Egypt nowadays we have we can we need can take advantage of really a high level of internet penetration over 50 million Egyptian use the internet uh, we have uh, a broad network of telecommunications Egypt has 90 million citizens however we are all centered around like 7% of the whole area of Egypt so it is uh, in my view, uh, it's really a point of advantage in delivering services because you, 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 are, you don't have really a wide span of coverage that you need to accomplish really to, to have a high level of penetration. We already have this. Uh, we have, uh, I, I, in terms of literacy and so forth, we have centers that can be deployed and many countries took advantage of them, especially in developed countries like in Latin America and Africa and Asia. Uh, uh, you can have public libraries as a point of service. The postal office can be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, created as a channel of points of services for e-government. And, and these issues were discussed several times. However, we need to go back one step and to see how we need to re-engineer government services around the technology to make the model more efficient, to make the model more user-friendly, to have higher impact. Uh, I worked in, uh, in a different time in electronic signature if a form would require 10 signatures for whatever reason, historically, you need to rethink the process. Do you really need 10 people to look at this form? Uh, uh, so that, that's the point. It's not about automating the form and having the 10 people sign the same form. And at the same time, you see, if you look in gov from government point of view, you'll find that these 10 people, when, when they find that they, they, they have subsequent and preceding people signing, uh, they wait, <coughs> excuse me, 
And, and maybe one of them would look, uh, I mean, really into some detail about this company. Because, I mean, at one point you say, ah, uh, this person will sign after me, so I let him revise the form. So at the end of the day, not get, getting 10 people to really rethink the process, it's just a matter of routine. Something that was developed, I mean, sometimes tens of years ago, and you keep this. We need to rethink the process, draw a line, make sure that the government employees understand the process. You see, at the end of the day, <coughs> service provision is about the citizens getting certain services and the employee doing the service is an, a, a, in an environment that is supportive. You don't want people to line, in, to line up in front of the, 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 this I mean, service providing uh, official uh, uh, for, for hours, complaining uh, of various really uh, challenges of getting the services. Uh, transportation is a difficult challenge if you need different offices and across the country or across a certain city that the, the, the citizen need to move around uh, uh, to get the services. It means crowded traffic. It means uh, a loss uh, of, uh, of the work power. People are moving all around for, for no reason. So that's why many governments in developing countries, I'm not talking now about the first wave, which is the developed countries, we're moving about the developing countries, make their countries efficient by creating the smart model of government. Re-engineering government is key. Having uh, this synergy, this common message that it is not by technology people, like, like people who work in the smart village. It is about really a new or re-engineered government services. And this model, I think we have reached a level of maturity in adoption of technology that people are not scared of by new tools or new gadgets. Lots of Egypt, I remember 20 years ago with the introduction of the internet in Egypt, uh, with few thousands using that. I mean, it used to be in the elite. Uh, circles. Now everybody knows the internet, everybody knows social networks. We have smartphones in the hands of our kids. A recent study by GSMA uh, in Egypt revealed that the internet penetration or the smartphone penetration in the hands of our children are even higher than their counter really uh, parts in, in, in developed countries like in Japan or others for whatever reasons. Uh, but we have citizens who are already familiar with the devices. So we need to de deliver new government services, new models. Re we have to have really uh, the, the uh, commitment to re-engineer government in a new way, being smarter and more uh, user-friendly, more citizen-centric. تمام انا معلش برضو انا هسال سؤال بالانجليزي وسؤال بالعربي عشان برضو الاخوه الصحفيين اللي معانا ومهم جدا ان هم يبقوا مشاركنا في الموضوع دوت معلش انا هرجع تاني دكتور هسال حضرتك بس ما هو الفرق ما بين الحكومه الالكترونيه والحكومه الذكيه واكيد هي يعني there must be لازم في differentiation ما بينهم الحكومه الذكيه والحكومه الالكترونيه هو يمكن ملخص اللي انا قلته بالانجليزي هو نفس السؤال الحكومه الذكيه او او اعاده هيكله الخدمات الحكوميه حول التكنولوجيا بهدف خدمه المواطن، المواطن هو قلب العمليه، الهدف من دوله اصلا انشاء دوله هي خدمه المواطن بشكل لائق بشكل مناسب وحمايه مصالحه. عشان يتم الموضوع ده من خلال التكنولوجيا، التكنولوجيا اتاحت لنا حاجات ما كانتش متاحه من 20 سنه. من 20 سنة ما كانش في انترنت تقدر تسمح لنا باننا نتصل ونحصل على مستندات موثقة الكترونية. في في مصر قانون توقيع الكتروني تم امراره في 2004. في بنية تحتية للتوقيع الالكتروني بقت موجودة تسمح ان المستندات تبقى موثقة عشان تحمي المصالح الناس. لان لان العبث بمستندات او تزويرها لو لو من غير اطار حماية ممكن يبقى في مشكلة ان انا اقدر اعمل. في نفس الوقت التكنولوجيا سمحت لنا بحاجات ما كانش ممكن نحلم بيها في العالم الورقي. يعني في العالم الورقي لما بقول نسخة أصلية النسخة الأصلية دي عشان أطلع نسخة مستنسخ منها مشكلة ولازم حد يثبت وباخد إجراءات كل طبقا للقانون المصري الصادر في 2004 كل مستنسخات النسخة الإلكترونية نسخ أصلية فحضرتك هتحليت مشاكل أساسية في التعامل الأدوات النقل الدفع الالكتروني اصبح النهارده عندنا ملايين المواطنين بيستخدموا الكريدت كارد وحتى الموبايل والدفع الفوري او تحويل الاموال عبر التليفون الموبايل بقت متاحه في مصر فاصبح انت النهارده العقبات الاليه اللي كانت عشان تعمل اجراء وتاخد موافقات او تدفع ثمن خدمات اصبحت محلوله حاليا مستوى النضج في التعامل مع ادوات التكنولوجيا من حاسبات ومن اجهزه تليفون ذكيه اصبح 
مستوى النضج مرتفع ينقصنا اننا عايزين رؤيه جديده للتعامل مع الخدمات الحكوميه مش معقول ان انا يبقى ببص على النمط اللي كان مستخدم تاريخيا ان انا عشان اخد موافقه مستنديه عايز خمس ست سبع ثمان جهات في اماكن مختلفه من انحاء الجمهوريه تاخد موافقتهم مطلوب تاخد موافقتهم بس مفيش داعي تنتقل لهم يعني ممكن تاخد يعني الاختصاص وممكن اعاده النظر في بعض العمليات انها مش محتاجه 10 توقيعات على كل مستند في النهايه حضرات حضرتك لما تبص اللي بياخد تاشيرات بتلاقي التاشيره عباره عن يعني رسمه كده بيعملها الموظف لا يمكن تقدر تعرف مين اللي مضاها ولا مضاها امتى يقول لك اه ده الاستاذ فلان اللي بيمضي بالقلم الاحمر بالشكل ده ما ينفعش النهارده عشان احفظ فكره النظر او وجهه نظر الحكومه الذكيه بتكلم انا عايز الخدمه عايز اتاكد من المواطن من 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 شخص او من هويه المواطن من استحقاقه لهذه الخدمه من ان اولا اسلوب برضو القضاء على الفساد النهارده تداول الاموال ممكن يبقى فيه فساد ممكن يبقى فيه خطر على الموظف وهو بياخد بيتلقى اموال وبيشيلها وبينقلها من مكان لمكان كل الحاجات دي التكنولوجيا حلتها لنا النهارده في مصر فاننا نبص رؤيه جديده للخدمات الحكوميه اعتقد هتبقى مفيده جدا لخفض النفقات الارتقاء بمستوى الخدمه وفي نفس الوقت المواطن هيصبح بالنسبه له الخدمه ايسر يتلقاها في اي مكان خدمات صحيه خدمات اجرائيه وجذب استثمارات احنا المؤتمر النهارده بيتكلم على الاستثمارات اصبح بقى من المسلم به في الدول الناميه مش بتكلم في الدول المتقدمه ان في حد ادنى من معدلات الاداء في الخدمات اللي عايز ياخد ترخيص ترخيص معين او تصريح معين بياخده في وقت قصير لو هياخده في وقت طويل الاستثمار هيدور على مكان ثاني لو اداء الخدمه مش هيكون مفعل باستخدام التكنولوجيا احنا في القريه الذكيه في صادرات من عشرات الالاف من المصريين اللي بيشتغلوا في القريه الذكيه بتوجه لكل انحاء العالم من خلال شبكات الاتصالات وتكنولوجيا المعلومات الكلام ده ما كانش متاح من 10 سنين فاتت من خمس سنين فاتت فالنهارده احنا عندنا وضع قائم في مصر يسمح بحكومه ذكيه بس يجب يكون هناك نظره جديده للخدمات الحكوميه لخدمه المواطن والارتقاء بمستوى الخدمات في الدوله بوجه عام وجذب الاستثمارات. بشكرك يا دكتور ميرسي جدا.